A few weeks ago, I created this car animation, and I've been receiving a lot of questions on how I did this tire burnout smoke effect. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through on how I created this effect in Blender. At the end of this video, you'll be able to easily create an awesome tire burnout effect that you can apply on your own projects. So let's start. So this is the setup for my scene. As you can see, the car model here is already rigged using free add-on, which is a rig a car add-on, so before you do this tire smoke effect, be sure to rig your car first using this free add-on. If you haven't watched that car rigging video, I provided the link in the description. Now, let's set up the scene, first. Let's create a ground for the car. Go to add, mesh, then add plane. Let's scale it up until we cover the entire pathway of the car animation. Go to edit mode, subdivide, number of cuts, let's make it 15. Go to object mode then apply the scale. Next, download and install the blender kit add-on. I have provided the link in the description. Then go to edit, preferences, add-on, type blender kit, then activate the blender kit online asset library. After activation of Blender Kit add-on, you can now see this toolbar here, where you can search for 3D models, HDRI, and 3D materials. On the search bar, I'm gonna type Asphalt, drag it to the plane to add materials to the car ground. Now, you can see that the asphalt material is already applied to the ground plane. Next, under HDRI tab, I'm gonna type Forest. Select one from the list and drag it into the scene. This is to give some background and environment lighting to our 3D scene. Now go to render view and you can now see the HDRI environment. Next, let's spin the rear wheels. In here, our goal is to make the car back wheels spin fast as it accelerates, to do that. Select the car rig collection in the project panel. Let's open this window here. Open the summary. As you can see, right now, the car moves slowly. These wheels animation is influenced by a rigger car add-on, that we have created on our car rigging tutorial. So make sure to watch that first before you do this effect to follow along better. Video link is in the description. Let's open the wheels rotation. Press Ctrl plus Tab on the keyboard to go into pose mode. As you can see, the offset factor property appears. Based on our car rigging tutorial, offset factor keyframes make our car move from point A to point B. Next, go to frame 60, select the first keyframe of the offset factor. Press Shift D to duplicate the keyframe and drag it on frame 60. This will make the car stationary from frame 1 to frame 60. Next, select the wheel rotation keyframes of all the wheels from frame 1 to frame 60, then delete the keyframes. This will now stop the wheels from spinning while it is in stationary position. Now, select this back right wheel spin control, go to frame 20, position the cursor to X rotation, then insert single keyframe, go to frame 60, change the X rotation value to 5000, then insert single keyframe. Now, you can see that the back right wheel already spins fast. To make the wheel rotation speed constant, select the keyframes, press T on the keyboard, then select linear. Next, select the back right wheel control, then simply copy the rotation keyframes that we have just created, then paste it to the back left wheel control. Alright, our back wheels now spin fast as the car accelerates, which is what we want before we apply smoke effect to the tires. Now we can add back some minimal wheel rotation on the front wheels as the car accelerates, simply copy of around 3 keyframes from the front right wheel and front left wheel, then position them on frame 20, 40 and 60. Now, select this root widget to reveal the offset factor property, then let's drag the last keyframe to the left to make it near the second keyframe. This will speed up the car movement after the tire burnout effect.
Next, let's create the smoke emitters. To do that, go to object mode, go to add, mesh, then add cylinder, let's rotate it like this, go to edit mode and delete its faces on both sides, then position it next to the tire, scale it to fit around the tire. Now, duplicate the cylinder in the edit mode, and place the duplicate on the other tire. On the object mode, go to object, apply scale and rotation, then set the origin to geometry. I'm gonna create an emitter collection and place this cylinder inside. Select the emitters, back right and back left wheel, press Ctrl P on the keyboard, and set parent to object keep transform. Now, you can see that the smoke emitters are already parented to the tires. From the object menu, select quick effects, quick smoke, and this will now create a smoke domain. To create a ground surface for the smoke collision, place the domain's bottom slightly below the ground plane. Now, resize the domain to fit in your scene. It should cover the area where you want the smoke to appear in the scene. Open a new window on the right side of 3D viewport, then on the editor type, change it to properties, then with the domain selected, click the toggle pin ID, to keep the current data block displayed. Next, select the smoke emitters, then on the lower right corner just below the property window, drag it up to open a new window, on editor type, select 3D viewport, then focus the camera on the back tires, the benefit of this extra window is that it will show you the look of the smoke on the final render, while working on the main 3D viewport on another window, select the emitters and disable it on renders. Let's try to resize the domain, apply the scale. Select the smoke emitter, set initial temperature into 10, this will speed up the smoke movement. Ok, let's try to increase the size of the domain a bit in front of the car, to have more room for the smoke. Ok, looking good. Now, for the density. This property controls the thickness of the smoke, so before the tire spin animation, it starts at zero, which means there is no smoke yet. Then once the tires are already spinning, which means that there is already a smoke, let's change the density into one, then at the end of the spin animation, let's change its value back to zero. Alright, looks good to me. Underflow source check the box is planar, since our emitter is unclosed mesh. Surface emission to 1, because we want the smoke to emit near from the surface of the emitter. Check box for initial velocity, then change the value of initial Y to 5. This is to make the smoke expel out right behind the car which is the positive Y axis. Next, on the domain settings, under border collisions, check the box for bottom, under gas, for buoyancy density and heat, change their value to negative 5. This prevents our smoke from rising up too fast. Check the box for dissolve, and make it 50. This will make the smoke disappear slower. For the cache, change the type from replay to modular, then check resumable. Bake the data, then let's preview the smoke simulation. Ok. Let's keep trying to tweak the setting until we achieve the look of the smoke that we want. Let's check the noise to add some noise. As you can see, after activating the noise, when we play, there's no smoke coming out. If you encounter this issue, don't get frustrated, it's because noise will deactivate smoke data, if not baked. If you want to activate the noise, just bake it for the smoke to appear. If you don't want the noise yet, just uncheck it, then the smoke will appear again. Let's deactivate the noise yet, then under emitter settings initial velocity. Change the value of source into 0.1. Then let's rebake the smoke sim to see if it would now look better. Ok, nice. This is now looking better. Then we can now add the noise.
cool. Let's free the noise for a while. Then change the value of dissolve into 20. Rebake data. Alright. Looking good, but let's try to make the dissolve value into 30. Then surface emission into 0.5. Then rebake. Perfect. We can now add the noise, then bake noise. Okay. Perfect. Now, let's add turbulence. To add some turbulent force at the back of the car, go to add, force field, then add turbulence. Change the strength into 3, size into 1. Then rebake data. Perfect. Let's free the bake, then now. Let's increase the resolution division into 64. Rebake data. Alright. Select the smoke emitter, change surface emission into 0.2, then rebake. Perfect. Now, we want the car body to react and collide with the smoke. To do that, select the car body, go to physics tab, fluid, then type into effector, then rebake. Okay, now the car body collide and reacts with the smoke. You can now disable the emitter visibility into viewport. Let's free the data, then increase resolution division into 128. Rebake. Then add noise. Rebake. Cool. Now, let's adjust the look of the smoke. To do that, go to Shader Editor, then select the Smoke Domain. As you can see here, we have Principled Volume Shader. We can manipulate the look of the smoke by adjusting the values of this shader. To change the color of the smoke, let's add a color ramp, and connect it to Principled Volume Color Input, then adjust the sliders until you achieve the color that you want. We can also change the density of the smoke, the lower the density, the thinner the smoke, the higher the value of density, the thicker the smoke, the effect of change is real time and you don't need to rebake the scene. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you on the next. Bye.